Tom Joyce expands upon an ancient art form. Every forging that I produce a piece of sculpture from holds and embodies in many ways everything that's ever been made before it, everything that will come after that. Knowing that all iron on the planet is really a store of material to be used by somebody else at a later date uh, also gives me pause as an artist, knowing that today it's a piece of sculpture, tomorrow who knows. And this is the way it's been from, from the beginning of time. And the beginning of time, I'm thinking four and a half billion years ago. For me, that's where it begins, uh, as celestial dust that was iron rich. I feel as though I've spent a, a lifetime mining the inherent qualities of the material I work with, that I set up the conditions whereby a, a formal uh, approach is begun, and then I allow the iron to speak for itself by uh, traveling in unexpected and unpredictable ways. And that is in its very nature, but something as a human being I couldn't have predicted. is first made when it's smelted industrially into ingots that are then forged and refined uh, for use. When that happens, when the initial ingot is made, the iron cools over a very long period of time and its uh, molecular structure is formed at that moment. With Ariel, I put the steel through a very rigorous and violent process that I would associate not unlike meteoritic iron when it's coming in from a super chilled state in, uh, in space, it hits our atmosphere through friction, it heats to a super high temperature, it begins to shed skin and it expands and contracts in that moment in a very violent way so that by the time it reaches Earth it shows properties that were a part of its subatomic structure but not able to be seen through the naked eye. So with Ariel, by going through a similar kind of process of extreme heating and cooling over and over and over, in some cases hundreds of times, that porous grain is exposed through the expansion and contraction of the, uh, the inherent quality of that material. Since 2005, I've been working in a factory outside of Chicago, and the factory is a, an industrial forge that produces over 250 million pounds of iron a month. And the forgings that they make are for aerospace industry, for offshore drilling rigs. It could be big uh, hydroelectric dam uh, turbine shafts. I watch from start to finish a forging being made and I take the offspring, I take what's cut from either end of the material. Um, sometimes it can be a thousand pounds, sometimes ten thousand pounds. And it's precisely that stock that I retrieve and then uh, make sculptures from. Like the Greek omphalos where we are birthed from a specific place, but that symbolically our umbilical cord is tied to us as we move out into the world and uh, traverse the planet in different ways. The Greeks believed that that weaving of all of our lives uh, coming into full bloom, that we were always somehow symbolically connected to, to that place. Berg uh, provides an example of the importance of the, the parent. Uh, and the title, of course, makes reference to uh, the tip of something much larger than what it is that you're seeing. I would love nothing better than to be able to show the work in its incredibly hot state right after the forging is complete so that one can feel the intensity of the heat radiating out from the sculpture. The color of it as well, the, the white hot aspect of it cooling down to what we consider a, a cherry red. Those temperatures are, 
are something that we don't encounter uh, on a daily basis. The closest I can come to being able to show the supple nature of iron in this molten state or in this very uh, hot, malleable state is to, is to render the, the sculpture as clay-like as, as possible um, so that it's soft. You feel the, the kind of supple softness that can be approached when iron is heated to 2600 degrees. There's something quite curious about the fact that I was introduced to iron at such an early age, that at 13 I felt as if I had always had a hammer in my hand. And to this day, at age 60, I, I find the material to be inexhaustible in terms of how the ideas can be manifested using uh, this very basic material. The fact that that gift of training was given to me by uh, a man in El Rito, New Mexico. I feel a, a kind of indebtedness to the passing on of information, to the accruing of knowledge, to the emblematic aspect that any tool in the hand of a maker has the same potential as material has in the hands of makers. That when I look at a hammer, what I see is a whole world unfolding. I don't see a tool that has limitations. I see an absolutely uh, open-ended possibility. And the fact that every day when I wake and walk into the studio, I see the same kind of potential uh, tied up in every moment. And that for me is the kind of unquenchable uh, thirst and curiosity that has driven the work for all these decades. You know, my task as an artist, I feel, is to, is to look where I haven't gone before and, of course, to investigate things that I don't know. And ripe for investigation is all kinds of new technologies that are available to be able to re realize different forms, different processes. Um, and, and for me, that is the, the next challenging frontier, how best to use the foundational understanding of, of a certain medium and being able to explore in uh, many different aspects and ways uh, how to incorporate these uh, technological innovations uh, in ways that haven't been seen before. <laughs>